I am Richard Aspenwin. I'm the governor of Taos Pueblo, and I am sending Taos Pueblo's warmest regards and greetings to the people that are attending the 2019 World Community Development Conference in Dundee, Scotland. We are located in Taos, New Mexico. I'm introducing Gilbert Suazo, a senior councilman who will be speaking on the history of this ancient community, and Ms. Sean Duran, who will be speaking on the development of Taos Pueblo's community development project. So welcome, everybody. My name is Gilbert Suazo, senior. I am a tribal councilman and a former governor of Taos Pueblo. My Indian name is uh, Kalakwina, which means uh, Standing Wolf. Taos Pueblo is a very traditional and conservative community, and we follow a schedule, a yearly schedule of activities and practices that is in a cycle. Therefore, whatever we do at this time of the year, we are going to be doing again in the following year. Because of this traditional way of life that we've been living for hundreds and hundreds of years, the concept of uh, planning 30, 40, 50 years into the future is, uh, has been kind of new to our community. Because of the encroachment of the modern world around our community, we found it necessary to begin to plan further into the future for the betterment of our community. When we started the process, I looked at it as a path from the past into the future. And the reason for that is because we value those old ways of life, the traditions that we have, and make them a part of our uh, future plans. Therefore, we have the responsibility of protecting our people, protecting our lands, and this makes it very important that we plan into the future so we can continue to protect the future generations of Taos Pueblo. Taos Pueblo has always been a sovereign, self-governing community. We have our governor and we have our war chief and their staff of are the tribal officials for the year. We also have a tribal council that makes the major decisions for our people. The sovereignty that we have has its roots way back in, into the past. We always have viewed ourselves as being a people that has their own way of life, their own way of governing. This was recognized when the Europeans first came into our area here, first by the Spanish government. They gave our people, our governing officials, a cane to symbolize that we had a right to be a self-governing community. Furthermore, when the United States came into the area, President Abraham Lincoln gave our people, our tribal officials, a cane also to symbolize that we have a right to be a self-governing community. In more recent years, we have been recognized by the President of the United States, Richard Nixon, when he gave us also a cane to recognize our sovereignty. The time that he gave us a cane, our people were fighting to regain some lands that we had lost, the federal government taking away this land. This land is known as the Blue Lake area. The president at that time supported us in our cause and eventually the land was returned to us and it was considered to be the cornerstone of the federal Indian policy. So our people, our tribal government has played an important role in the sovereignty of all Indian people across the United States. We have played a leadership role in various ways and therefore we are protecting a strong community that uh, we are upholding. Sean Duran will be speaking on the project that was developed over a period of four years on the 
model of uh, community development that was put together by the participation of the community, tribal leaders, and people who are involved in the health and uh, well-being of the Taos Pueblo community. The model is seen as a tree which uh, starts with the roots, the trunk, the branches, and the leaves. And the way this is different from any other kind of plan is that uh, the project is coming from the inside out. We are developing our own solutions from the people speaking and going to the outside where the process will be introduced to the outside world. Hi, my name is Sean Duran. I'm the Tribal Programs Administrator for Taos Pueblo. I've been in this position since 2013 and started off with the process of working with the community on the Community Development Comprehensive Plan. It was completed in 2014 as my tribal leaders have spoken before me, but through that process we found the importance of prioritizing the nine elements that were found within the plan. We started off the process um, for priority development in 2017. During that year, uh, we took the nine elements of the comprehensive plan and created surveys. We um, surveyed the tribal council, community members, youth, elders. It went um, through several hundreds of people. And out of that process, we developed the top four priorities. In 2018, I was invited to a workshop that was being facilitated by Holly Scheib, Dr. Scheib, and Po Chen through Youth Heartline. As I was in this process, I fully realized the importance of overlaying what we were doing in the priority process with what was occurring on the workshop level with social services in one of our divisions. I saw the participatory workshop as being a way of working with, through our top four priorities. So I very quickly sought tribal leadership's uh, approval to work with a third party entity to help us go through the process of developing strategic plans. As the tribal leaders spoke before me, they mentioned that um, Taos Pueblo wasn't very used to comprehensive planning and those things, and we had to focus more on the contemporary and modern way of doing things, especially when you look at community planning and program development. And through that process that Poe and Holly shared with us, it, it was clearly shown that um, having policy on the leadership level, community level, and individual level seemed like the way of going and developing goals and objectives for the top four priorities. And this process would require us to go out to the community and spend many, many, many hours of work um, to start working on these uh, four priority areas. And we did. And now um, we're ready to have additional workshops with the tribal leadership this year and result in a community forum uh, sometime in July. Um, after that time, we'll be refining our strategic plan and then going back to our council for approval. Once that occurs, the next level for us would be to go into the data management regarding these goals and objectives and creating logic models based on informed decision making from the data that's being collected. We're currently looking for funders to support us in doing this uh, because the tribe is committed to do several things, but we will need another uh, partners out there to help us move through this process as we continue to develop it. One thing that was mentioned by our tribal governor, uh, Richard Aspinwin, was the importance of doing program from the inside out. And what that means for our community is really developing programs on our terms. For over um, decades, uh, tribes have received federal programs from the federal government, but they're all with stipulation on how those programs are delivered and what we do in terms of how we're delivering those to our people. Now we have an opportunity of turning that around and looking at the issues and needs within the community and then going outward to um, funders with those needs instead of it coming from researchers or funders from the outside in. Uh, too long have tribes dealt with that in indigenous communities across the United States where 
other folks are telling us better how to manage our people and the things that we need, where this process really flips it on its tail, where we're able to see what our needs are, and then we go out to seek the resources to support those needs. This process looks into the core values of who we are as Taos Pueblo people. And by doing that, we are able to deliver the best possible solutions from our community within and deliver it out to the people that will be receiving these services. The process that we took um, to develop the four core areas has been very important in that they're, they're in tandem with who we are as our culture and who we are as our core values in the community. Several people that, that commented on this process were very intrigued and happy to know that those needs are being addressed and looked at in a way that has never been done before. Before, uh, programs don't even pay attention to those types of things. Programs, for example, I could give an example of, say, the senior project that comes from the state funds. The state requires um, home delivery of congregate mills and they're delivered in, in, in boxes to elders. When we're looking at this in terms of core value of Taos Pueblo, for example, that program might be changed to where somebody actually takes time to visit with that elder and looking at our core values and how we respect elders in our community. It's bringing back those things that we've always known and held dear, and how are we going to be putting that lens on top of program um, endeavors and outcomes and objectives and goals. That's really a way of, of change for us because before all those things have been developed for us and then delivered to us, expecting us to be able to take that. For meaningful change within the community, it really is going to take the community taking that on and taking that accountability and responsibility and turning that into goals and objectives that are measurable. And that's where the data pieces are going to become very, very important in that we, as a sovereign nation, are able to do that more on our terms than anyone else's. My introduction to SAGE Consulting, including uh, Dr. Scheib, Holly Scheib, and Po Chan, happened because of how they work with a community in terms of bringing out what becomes important through a participatory process. This process requires the full engagement of the community in a way that's never been done before, where you're actually creating stories about the different priorities, you're, you're writing about them, you're trading them with another individual. At times that could feel uncomfortable because you're leaving yourself open. You have to have an open mind to do this. And once you're going through the process, however, you begin to see how it works to extract that information that becomes data that can be utilized to develop vision, mission statements, and goals and objectives that are deliverable. Through that is another set of data that would be generated that would be useful to the tribe. We're looking at creating a further model of this by training folks in our community to utilize that data to make informed decision making in the future and also to see how we're doing in terms of developing and delivering on programs based on the top four priorities. The idea of utilizing a data scientist like Dr. Scheib has become important because a lot of times in the past, researchers and folks like that would come to communities like Taos Pueblo, do their research and move on to the next community where the communities themselves wouldn't take anything internal, but they just have that service and have it move on. I like to say that Dr. Scheib has worked a way where she says, I'd like to work myself out of a job someday, and she jokes about it. But in true reality, um, it is in, in engaging the community, empowering that community to do this work themselves. And that's the, the goal, is that we eventually get there to deliver this process on our own terms for our community. It is necessary to create partnerships in order to do this. And we found that this is one way of doing that to where they're not creating a permanent presence, but one of helpful, resourceful support 
This information and process will become very important to Taos Pueblo now and into the future for many generations to come. In our language, what I said was, I have a great deal of gratitude towards the people who spent hours and hours developing these priorities, all the input from the community members. And in closing, I would like to say that uh, as tribal leadership, we're always looking for ways to make life better for our people and to protect our community and protect our resources. Our efforts here are for the, our kids that are gonna be in this community into the future. So I would like to thank everybody who worked on this process here. And I would like to thank Po Chen and Holly Scheib who really worked closely with Sean and last year's leadership, former governor Gilbert Suazo and other tribal leaders that helped on this process. And we are looking forward to be a leader in, in indigenous communities, whereas they can come and we can teach how communities can solve problems and make life better for their people.